there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to try and fix this IBM ThinkPad. This particular model is a T42. So I got this on eBay with a load of other stuff for £30. That was for the whole job lot. And it included some other laptops and some Xbox 360s, PlayStation 3. I got it from a guy I often buy stuff from called Danny. And whenever he has anything that he thinks may be of interest to the channel, he lets me know. And then I buy it from him on eBay. But yet this was for sale for other people to buy as well. But he tells me when something's interesting on and uh, if I like the look of it, I buy it. So it says here, the IBM ThinkPad Centrino won't turn on, not sure if it's a faulty battery or another fault. This particular one didn't come with the charger, but it did have, it's got a hard drive in it. It says here, two laptops don't have hard drives, but the IBM has a 40 gigabyte hard drive that needs putting in properly. So what I needed to do was charge it up. Now I haven't got a, 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 a proper power supply. So what I did is I had a look at the back and I got a connection that fitted into this one here. And then I had to find out what voltage and uh, amps it was drawing. And if you have a look here, you can see 16 volts. That's the DC symbol in the middle there at 4.5 amps. Yeah, what I did is I got my bench power supply here. This is a, a new addition to the channel. I got this probably a couple of months ago, but I haven't actually, I only unpacked it this week. So uh, I set the voltage to 16 volts, current to 4.5 amps, and then I had to work out if the center pin on here was positive or negative. Well, that was easy to do because all I had to do was put my meter to continuity. And so when the leads press together, it makes a noise. And then all I had to do was, you see here we have sensor pin is normally positive, but in rare circumstances, oh, there you go. Do you know what? I didn't see that earlier, but now under the lights, I can see it. I didn't even need to do that because you can see here the sensor pin is positive. The outer pin is negative. You can see that there. But I didn't see that. So all I did is I picked a ground on the board here. So for example, here, and then I just touched the outer pin, the outer, uh, outer connection. And if you have a listen, you can see it's going off. So that's not touching the middle, that's the outer. And then you can see when I hit a ground on the board, it's there. When I go into the middle pin, it's not doing anything. So I now know 100% that even without seeing that, the middle pin is positive. So basically, I let it charge up for about two or three hours, and then the light came on and the light went out. So it looks like it's definitely taken a charge. Also, when it was charging, it was drawing something like, I think it was at three amps or something like that. So uh, yeah, now when I turn it on, it's definitely turning on, but it's not booting. So this is where we're gonna pick up the video now, where I'm turning it on and trying to work out why it's not booting. So let's get the camera in a better position. Okay, so here we have it. So originally it looks like it came from cash converters whenever that was. Now this is a, a very old model. I think this is from like the early 2000s. But saying that, it does look to be really nicely made. So I reckon when it was in its day, I'd say it was a very good laptop because everything just looks really good high quality on it. Unfortunately, it looks like we've had a load of super glue on this button in the middle here. So this is not pressing anymore, but all the other buttons appear to press. So if we can get it working, we have to look at that to find out what's going on. Also, it needs a nice good clean. It's full of scratches and stuff. So it doesn't look in a very good condition at all. But the laptop itself does look to be a good, does look to be a good quality laptop. So now let me turn it on and I'll show you what it's doing. It's got like indicators up here for when it's charging. And it's also got indicators here as well. So it's quite nice. So let's turn it on. I'll show you what it's uh, coming up with. So it comes up with that there. Screen looks a bit, I'm not sure if it looks uh, a little bit kind of orangey or not. Oh, there you go. Actually, it's gone to a normal color now. So maybe it just took a few seconds to boot up properly. Now, when I turned it on earlier, what it did is it just took quite a while. It was on this for a long time and then it came up with some kind of uh, error. So I'll show you that now. There you go, media test failure, check cable, exiting Intel boot agent, operating system not found. So it's not finding the operating system. So what we're gonna do is let's check out this hard drive because Danny did say that the hard drive needs to be put in properly. So I'm just gonna turn it off. There we go. And when I had a look around earlier, I could see basically look here can you see that this is loose here and it looks like there's a hard drive just in here so let's pull it out well 
Right, so this is a, yeah, 40, 40 gigabyte. Right, now these pins I personally haven't seen before. Normally the other pins are SATA. So these must be, I think these are called IDE. Right, so I'm just want to want to work out if this is actually going in, which way this goes in. Hmm, because it seems to fit both ways, doesn't it? Let's just see if it goes in that way. Also, all the screws are missing, but I have got screws in. I have got screws in this bag here. There was also this uh, this bag in it. And looking around here, there's a load of screws in here. All right, so we've got four sort of blackish coloured screws and two silver coloured screws there. So uh, let's put a couple in here so I can take this out. And we'll see if it clicks into place or not. I'm just wondering which way it goes in, so I presume it's going to go. I presume it's going to go that way in. No, okay. So it's not going to fit that. It's not going to fit that. Oh, it's because I haven't opened up the lid. Hold on. In case you haven't watched my videos before, I uh, remember these are trying to fix videos. It doesn't mean that I'm actually going to be able to fix it. Right, so it goes in that way, or that way. So let's have a go at the caddy. Right, that goes in that way, fine. Right, it doesn't go that way. Oh, yes it does. Ah, oh, that's annoying. So which way is it supposed to go in? I mean, logic would have it that it goes in that way there. But saying that, when I'm looking in here now, one second now. When I'm looking in here, so we took it out this way, didn't we? We took it out that way, but have a look at these connections here. Can you see that the pins are closer to the top? And where my thumb is, there's a uh, you know there's there's a there's a gap, isn't there? So it's closer to the top. If you have a look in here, the pins are actually the sockets for the pins are closer to the top. So it means then, I presume, that it's going to be going in this way round. So maybe that's why it wasn't booting. So now one second. So we're going to be going in. We're going to be going in that way. Let's see how this fits. Right. So it doesn't really fit like that, does it? So maybe it goes the other way. Well, the caddy doesn't fit that way. That's for sure. Let's put the caddy this way. Yeah, you can see all the holes line up here. Now I wonder is it supposed to be... Yeah, it has to be there. So let's get it on. And uh, I'm not sure why we've got two different screws than all the others. So I'm thinking... Let's have a look at the screws on the bottom. What colour are they? They're that sort of browny colour, aren't they? Yeah, so these two silver ones. Maybe the two silver ones, see, they've got a different... They've got a different top to them. The silver ones are more flat on the top, while these are more rounded. So what I'm going to do is... Let's have a look how this goes on here. So we think that the pins are going up top like that, so it's actually going in that way round. So that has to go this way. Like... like... That doesn't fit there though, does it? Right, that doesn't fit there. Let's try putting that this way around then. Ah, there we go. That's it. It fits that way around. Does this line up here? Yes, it does. Do you know what? I bet there would have been washers on here originally because these heads look like they're going to fall straight through there, don't they?
Hmm. No point in having them unless you were supposed to bend these in a bit. Well, let's just put them in and see what happens. We don't even know if this is going to work yet, do we? No, I don't know if these are supposed to go on the side or the top. Right, so now let's see if that's going to go in there. Yes, it is. Oh, that fits nicely. Hold on now, is that going to come out as well? Yeah, okay, so I'm just going to leave it like that. I mean, they're not really doing anything, but I suppose it's, it's hooking, isn't it? Just enough to take it out. Because once uh, this thing's never going to be taken out, is it? Unless you're going to swap it over. Right, yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, let's pop a screw in the bottom. Right, so that's all in nice and securely. Let's see now if it's going to turn itself on. Right, I can see that little hard light, uh, hard drive light flashing. Here we go! Windows, X, oh wow, I haven't seen that in a long, long, long time. Okay, so it looks like it was just that the battery was completely flat and the hard drive was installed, I think, upside down. That's kind of weird that it's so easy to, it's, 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 you think that the caddy would have been designed to only fit one way rather than being able to fit uh, both ways. It would have only taken a kind of, a few grooves in here to, to, to put in a caddy and a few grooves in here to make sure that it wasn't put in the wrong way. There you go, Windows is starting up, Windows XP. And the sticker on the bottom says Windows XP Professional. Also, it's strange seeing the size screen, you know, rather than the widescreen. Right, well, here we go. It's, uh, it appears, is the trackpad working? Yes, that's working. Let's go see if the left click and stuff. Yes, that's working. Excellent. Okay, I'll have to connect it to the internet and stuff. So now, what do we have to do? Let's worry about this key in the middle. So let's open up something where I can type in, type in a, uh, let's go to, God, I've forgotten how to use all this. Uh, what do I need? Just a uh, word or some notepad or something. How do I search on here? Oh God, this reminds me of being, Back with BT, uh, we had like a Panasonic tough book that looked similar kind of layout to this, but it was kind of indestructible because they didn't trust engineers with a, a laptop. They had to give us something that was basically <laughs> indestructible in case we started hammering in nails and stuff with it. Right, what's... Uh... That's really embarrassing. I don't know where uh, all programs, let's have a look here. I've just been on that, haven't I? Would it be on accessories? Notepad, here we go. It's coming back to me now. Right, let's see now if the keypad's working. So that's working, is caps, that's working. Shift, yep. Yeah. So F's working, G, yes. Right, H is not working, so we've definitely got a problem with H here. Let's just check B underneath, that's working, J's working. Okay, so what I need to do is, I need to uh, take the H key off and let's see if the pad's working underneath it. And uh, let's see if I can get the... It's picked up wireless networks as well, so it looks like the Wi-Fi is going to work. Fonts. Let's just make it big so you can see it. Here we go. There we go. Right, OK. Might as well make it full page, full screen. Right, so H is definitely not working. So let's take H off and let's see exactly what's happening. To me, it looks like the whole thing's just being glued. Yeah, it's got a rubber band stuck to it. Okay. Right, that is definitely not doing anything up on the screen. Yeah, nothing's happening there. Right, let's try to pick away at it. Let's see if, oh, also we've got the mouse thingy here. Is the mouse working? This cursor thing. Yes, it is. I just need to get a new thing for that. Yeah, look. Yeah, there you can see that moving around there. Okay, so I need to get a new little cover for that. Right, let's have a look at this thing here and see what's going down. 
So I'm going to get my tweezers. Let me take off the G next to it and see if I can work out what it's supposed to look like. So it does look like the mechanism's there, doesn't it? It does look like the mechanism there. It's just all been glued. Uh, everything's no, it's all rock hard. Now, what's going to loosen up super glue? I wonder. I wonder would IPA loosen it up at all? I'm going to uh, go to Google because also we've got super glue on all these keys here as well. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to clean that up. I'm presuming the people that like these laptops probably want them in good condition because I think it's going to be more the design of them rather than obviously the. Uh, the ability of them because you might as well just buy a laptop for a new modern laptop for 100 quid or something is going to outperform this but uh, yeah I'm thinking it's the f the fact that it's a, a ThinkPad that people like so uh, yeah I'm going to google how to remove super glue maybe IPA will do it acetone is what, what it needs but I haven't got any acetone also I looked up does IPA remove uh, super glue from plastic and people said yes so let's uh, let's shut this down it's so weird when it first of all goes on that it's got this really weird uh, sort of orange tinge and then that disappears. So it must it must need to warm up for a bit, whatever screen it uses. Right, let's just get rid of this for the time being. I'm going to shut it down just in case I don't want to sort of short anything out. To be fair, it seems quick enough, you know, when you're when you're going round, because I suppose this has been designed. In fact, it says here, designed for Windows XP. So... Uh, yeah, it actually works. It works all right. So I'm going to get some isopropyl alcohol, a little cotton bud, a Q-tip, and put it around here, and let's see if that's going to soften it up at all. So I presume the key was coming off, and somebody probably thought they uh, had a little bit of super glue, and maybe. The nozzle fell off and a whole load came out and kind of went all over the keys here because it's absolutely covered. Okay, well, the blue thing's crushed in now, so maybe it is softening up a bit. No, that's gone completely, hasn't it? Nice, okay. I mean, I need to take it apart anyway, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to reuse any of this. Oh, so it's missing the black thing at the top here. This is on the bottom of the key. Yeah, maybe it's on here. Now I can leave this bottom thing in, it's just that it's not supposed to be glued in. I suppose it doesn't really matter because it's the top thing that moves. But uh, it's just kind of a bit annoying that it is glued in when it doesn't need to be. I suppose realistically I'm going to risk breaking it, so I suppose I should really just leave it.
Right, okay, so we know the one works next to it, so I suppose we have to work out now how it comes apart, put it onto this one, and then uh, see if a replacement can be bought, because I'm pretty sure that there's going to be lots of spares for things like this on eBay. out there, okay, that pops out there. Okay, so I think that's actually held in with a bit of silicone. So let's just see now if I can attach this onto here. I suppose I won't be able to because this black bracket needs replacing as well, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm gonna break that if I put it in there. So I do need to take out this black bracket as well. Okay, that actually came out easier than I thought. Oh, so that's interesting. Look, the traces here actually go around to other keys. Yeah, so it's kind of built into the metal. Right, so let's take this one off here. Pop it onto here. There we go. Yeah, that's in. That is in. But obviously, I won't be able to clip this key back on it, will I? Because those bits are going to be broken now. Let's see. No, okay, the key's broken. Right, okay, so let's just pop this key on for the moment. I know it's the wrong one, but let's just see if it works, because we know the one next to it definitely works. So let's see if this is... Uh, well, that's not going to work now because of the thing missing there. All right, well, I'll just have to press it like that. If that works there, we definitely then know that it's, uh, it's okay and I can just buy one, buy a, a key. I'm just thinking the only key that's really affected bad is the, uh, the J here, so it might be worth just buying a new J rather than getting acetone to try to remove that to make it good. You know, if I'm buying the other keys, it might only be something like 99p extra to get a one extra key. I'll try and scrape it and clean it up. I can take it off the board. Yay, there we go, H is working. Excellent, okay, so that's fine. I'll just have to buy the new uh, mechanism. I'm presuming another keyboard probably isn't gonna fit that, but I can check because I will have other keyboards around the house. But look, that's good news. Right, so now what we have to do is give everything a good clean and let's try to get this lid, the, the front, try to get some scratches and stuff removed from that. Actually, look, with the key off, it is uh, super glue is scraping away kind of chipping off. Yeah, that looks much better. I think when I start wetting that down and polishing it up, I think that key will be okay. So to begin with, I'm just gonna give it a good wipe down everywhere, see what it looks like, and then I can think about how to uh, get rid of the scratches from the top, because the top's got like a, a slightly, uh, I don't know, it's ever so slightly rubberized. It was this sort of thing where if you scratch your nails across it, it will leave, leave a stain. But down here, this is all just normal plastic. Okay, 
can see all the dirt coming out of it. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side, our fears are done. All the good times just begun. Hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright Okay, so it looks much better now, but there's still lots of scratches and stuff on the top here. Also, the lid feels sticky. It's not a very nice feel to it. So I think I'm going to try to get some plastic polish on it, just to try to get it all uh, a kind of even amount all over it. But the inside of it's come up come up really nice now. You can see that it has had quite a bit of wear, because if you look, a lot of the keys are shinier than other keys. So around this area here, it's definitely shinier. And also in the, uh, the track pad here. But it's, uh, it looks good. It's nice and clean. Looks all, it looks all pretty complete. So I'm just going to have a look now. I've got an old netbook and a laptop from years ago. Similar sort of era to these, but obviously a, a lot cheaper product. I just want to see if the inside key part is the same, just to see if it will, will fit these, because then I might just have to buy the top cover off eBay rather than buying the bottom bit as well. OK, I've been busy behind the scenes working away, and what I've been working on is the keys. So I had a look at this old laptop here. This has been out of service now for probably around 10 years, this Fujitsu one. And I had the keyboard here. So I took the little springy things out because really the springy things are probably gonna work on most keyboards. They might be slightly different sizes, but they're probably all gonna do a similar kind of job. But anyway, this springy thing fitted on this one perfectly. Now, these things here are like a different mechanism. They're still like a scissors, but they're, they're slightly smaller. But I thought to myself, I can probably get it to work, but I don't want it to be on the H key because that key is going to be in constant use. But for example, this hash key over here, some people might use it a lot, but I don't use it. I don't think I've, I'm not sure if I've ever used it. So what I did is I got the insides off this key here and I put it onto this key, put this one back together, glued it back together, put it down, cleaned off all the other bits of uh, black plastic that was glued onto it and I got it back on there. And then I bodged up this key here using the scissor lift thing from the old Fujitsu keyboard and look it is working okay so now this key doesn't feel as nice as the rest well actually it does feel nice it feels different than the rest though it's a lot more it's a lot harder to press but look you can see it takes a bit of force but you can see it's working fine and if I go to shift that's working fine as well yeah it just needs a bit more pressure so that's not such a big deal but this uh, H key now is actually working okay so if you have a look here now hold on one second, let me start a new line. Right, watch, can you see? And it's responsive, look. Yeah, so for example, like, help me, yeah? Hello, you can see it's working just fine. And also, you might notice I've got a little blue thing here. So that, that little cursor thing there that moves around the screen is basically the same as the one on here. So it must be just pretty generic, these kind of things. So I presume this one should be a red one, but I just borrowed it from here just for the purpose of fitting, finish off the video. But at least I now know I can buy them because these are you're probably gonna pick these up for pennies or maybe like 10 of them for like a pound or two. So they're not gonna be expensive. But now look, that is actually working fine, yeah. So this laptop, although it's very old, is nice it works pretty quickly and uh, it's come up nice and clean so what i have to do now is i have to basically just try to clean up the back so what i'm going to do there is 
use some of this thing here. So it's for like car headlights and stuff, polishing up plastic. I'm going to give it a go, see if it works or not. It might work. If not, I haven't really got much to lose. I don't think it's going to make it any, uh, any worse. I've used it before on other plastics. Now, the battery did die on me. It said low battery. And so I've plugged it in again via my little power supply down here. And you can see at the moment it's drawing because it's charging 3.4 amps. So it's quite a it's quite a power hungry little thing because that's at uh, you know that's at near enough 16 volts. So considering I had it fully charged, I don't really think this has been on for maybe more than half an hour or possibly 45 minutes. It hasn't been on very long. So maybe after the next charge now, the batteries might start to get a little bit better, but I doubt it. I think the batteries have probably come to the end of their life. So to make this perfect, I would need uh, a new H key here and uh, the mechanism underneath it. And I would need a new battery and also it still needs a power supply as well. So I suppose by the time you buy those things, you'll probably find that they might end up costing more than the actual laptop itself. But I'm happy with the way it's kind of been repaired at the moment. I'm definitely going to get one of these in red because I need that for my one because I use my little laptop all the time. But uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm really, really happy with it. Let's clean up the lid and see what it comes out like. Oh, look at that, it doesn't look too bad at all. I definitely think it looks better than it did before. If you kind of look with the light against it now, yes, it's still got scratches, but not to the same extent as it did. Uh, it's still horrible up here, but it certainly looks better. Overall now, that is a clean looking machine. So let's get it set up and uh, maybe get a game on it or something. Okay, so I've got it set up and I've got it connected to my Wi-Fi. All that was okay. It took a bit of while, took a while to connect to actually be able to get onto the internet, but now it is working. The problem is it's kind of unusable. Every time I go onto something, it keeps coming up with security certificate is out of date. You need to approve it or reject it. And to go onto one website, you might have to do that seven or eight times. So it's unusable. Then when you go onto something like YouTube, basically it says it doesn't support the browser anymore. And so then you try to update the browser. When I go onto Chrome to try to update that, it's coming up with as if it's a tablet. So uh, it wants me to go to like the Google Play Store or whatever it is. So that's not uh, that's not happening. When I do Opera and Firefox, it's it's just rejecting it. So I don't know whether. I don't know. I don't know what I'd have to do to this to get it up and running properly. Thing is though, am I going to do it? No. You know, this is just more to, to look at. I mean, it's a lovely looking thing. I don't think anybody would be getting one of these to actually use as an everyday laptop. I tried putting a game on it, which was this game here, but even this one is the oldest PC game I have, and the minimum requirements for this are still more than what this can handle. So I've gone over to Solitaire, which is what used to pass the time years and years ago. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun one as far as the kind of fix and the cleaning and stuff is concerned but it, this wouldn't actually be like the other laptop that I fixed up is usable and then you could put for example an SSD in that and it would make it much more usable even nowadays I think this one would you probably struggle but then again I'd probably get loads of comments on this video saying that they somebody has one and they use it every single day so maybe I just need to put an SSD in it and then it will probably run a lot quicker maybe I need to update something and then it would all be working fine but let me just show you what I mean if I go to Opera here you can see it actually sort of loads up initially okay. It's not too bad. Let's go to uh, Google. See what I mean? Even Google. I have to approve the certificate. And again. Yeah. Then if I was to go to something like the BBC. It works quick enough when it's working. But now if I went to BBC News. Again, approve. 
But this could be anti the antivirus or something on it. But uh, I have actually disabled that until it restarts and it's still doing this. And can you see I have to do it that many times. At this moment in time it's making it unusable. Because it's saying that everything's expired. Still going, you see? But eventually when it comes... Oh, and again. Eventually when it does come up... Is it going to come up now? There you go. Okay. Oh, and again. <laughs> See? Oh, and it's still going. So, uh, yeah, I think you probably have to do quite a lot of updating on this to get it uh, to get it any bit usable. But saying all that, when you're just moving around the place, it is pretty responsive. So that's uh, that's quite good. And you've got to admit, it is a thing of beauty. It does look really, really nice, and it just looks absolute quality. I have to find out what these things were selling for, because to me, they look like originally they would have been expensive laptops. So if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.